Welcome back, Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Ed Nightingale. That's right. Huge presentation tonight on Leonardo da Vinci, his great work, and the Giza template. Now, we left off uh, with uh, 18 and 19. Now we're up to number 20, which is Madonna Lita. And uh, let's get this kicked off here. Uh, Another incredible work. I can only imagine what we're going to see in image number 21. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same thing, you know. They're uh, they're using this template, and, and you know they they change up different uh, types of uh, angles or whatever, or different sizes, but they're all pretty much saying the same thing. Let's go to uh, I've got it up here in Twitter. Rita just got uh, twenty and twenty one up. Madonna Lita. And see, this is what's exciting is we can look at 20 and then we know that we're going to go to 21 and go, bam. Right. So <laughs> here we go. You see, you know, Ed, man, what, how, how can this be? I mean, how, Whoa. I mean, how, how is, how can this be that this is insane well, to me? It's, it's just insane. Well, it's it's all very logical, and, and it, it answers so many of the questions that we've all been looking for. You know, we've been this this hunt, uh, you know, and trying to understand Giza and what's been going on, uh, and all these things are related, and it's telling us a very simple story about where our son came from. I mean, it's the most important thing that we would need to know as a civilization living on a planet. We, we need to know the seasons of the year. We also need to know seasons of the great year for our survival. We know, you know, if we didn't realize there were seasons in the year and we didn't uh, prepare for, for those seasons, we probably wouldn't last long. We would run out of food. We would, you know, freeze to death or in certain places. And, you know, we would be unprepared. And there's also these seasons of the great year. That's what these people were tracking and trying to show us and understand. And understand that at certain points within this great year, there are changes. What constellation and, is... Uh, her face. What constellation is her face? It's right. Well, actually, it's uh, in Aquarius. Is uh, right that's, there in her eye and on her cheekbone. That's insane to me. It's 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 perfect. It is, and, and they were planning it that way. You know, and, they 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 were. It was a deliberate thing they were doing. They were trying to show you this, and they were trying to. You can bet that these guys all sat around and were talking about this, too, probably just as amazed by it as we are. And and you know, they, the original green circle uh, that uh, it, in, in, like, image number five, the green circle intersecting once again right at the tip of her nose. The angle of her nose is, is all there. But and then, just taking a step further, and look how the constellation completely... Uh, uh, builds out her face. Yeah. That yeah. is crazy. You know, yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's the most beautiful. Again, it just adds a whole other level to the beauty of these paintings and, and a level that is so much uh, actually more important, you know. Uh, th- this really kind of changes art history. Uh, any Anyone who sees this and understands this um, realizes this changes the game uh, and if, if, if that isn't enough there's a, a, a two three other things that i want to point out here um one is her hand on the back of the baby each one of those fingers is represented uh if that, that that that's crazy talk right there but it's right there yeah. but then go yeah. and look at the feet of the baby and and look at what is actually happening there, and that is just crazy. Yeah, yeah. They they used feet and toes, and again fingers and oh. and noses and facial features. That's what, what they were using. Uh, the main uh, 
pointing out some of the main parts, uh, but they used all kinds of different points. There's plenty of points within this template to, to use, but they use ones that were relevant to this specific position and uh, telling a certain story. You know? Man, her right arm. Oh, that is just crazy, yeah. man. And her yeah. back and the robes. Oh, man, her left shoulder. Yeah. That is just that's that's incredible incredible okay uh we could i could spend all night on this painting we need to move on <laughs> let's go to uh 22 oh no you do have the mona lisa here well this is this is owls work uh mona lisa this is another version that they, they think an earlier version of mona lisa it's at a different proportion oh uh, this is the other mona lisa. this is the what they're calling mona lisa two right or Mona Lisa one. Yeah, I believe so. Right, yes, right. I, believe right. I think they're calling it two. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Oh, here we go. Let's just zap this right over. Pull the to, trigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pull the trigger. There here we go. we go. All right. Let me get this up in Twitter really quick. I don't want to lag behind. Go ahead, Ed. So uh, this one utilizes again the thirty-three. Uh, division of the grid, but another another thing that was used in this painting, which I, you didn't see too too much in the other paintings. If you look at her, it would be her right eye. Um, you see the orange line that that goes through her right. Um, uh, her right eye, yep. which is and also which is right on the ecliptic. So the the intersection of the ecliptic, the round circle. That the, that the constellations are on, and that orange line. That orange line is that circle divided by five. Um, and it's a fifth of this great year. So that, that position is really, really important. And it's how that actually gets indexed and positioned is even more mind-blowing <laughs> That would take a little bit of time to go into, but um, if if you divide that circle by five, that that one is going right through her right eye. Uh, um, I, I'm going to go back for a second. I want to see something here. Let me go in the previous. Okay, so the center, the inner. Okay, is right through the center of uh, her chest, right at her, uh, right above her heart. Right. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. I had to back up right above her heart. See it. Okay. Now I'm back on the grids. Again, uh, incredible. I, I yes. When you blow up, I see. I'm looking at this. I'm going up to uh, 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 a huge percentage. Um, you know, I'm up at like 500 percent, where I've got my entire screen is just her face. And yeah, it, yeah. It, the I encourage people to do that. Right, it, it gets even more mind blowing. The harder you look at it, the more mind blowing it is. It's well, the detail. ratios. I see. This is the thing, though, um, and you need to, like I, uh, uh, like Ed was just saying, blow this up because you get all the ratios from the chin to the lips to the nose to the eyes to the forehead. Uh, uh, that's top to bottom, and then you can go left to right, the side of the faces, uh, the ears, uh, the eyelids, the eyes, um, the side of the nose, once again. Uh, the composition is absolutely deliberate. There's no question oh, yeah. about it. The, there's, yeah. <clears throat> the left side of the head here uh, is is completely out of control. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that makes up the... The and actually the other Mona Lisa does the same thing. That that 2012 date line or the angle of the spin or the causeway from the Great Pyramid, the the yellow line there makes up her hair. That's how you know the the composition of her hair was was. Now created. here where um, I'm looking at the clock, I don't want to get behind. Uh, we need to move on to the next one, but uh, here. Where Leo and Regulus and the Great Sphinx um, originate. Let me go back. What's the significance of that? Where I'm sorry, go ahead, say that. Where Regulus and Leo and the Fibonacci originate on the Great Sphinx. 
Um, where is that in, originally in the painting? Oh, I see. It's right at the top of yeah, her right. hand. Right, right. At, yeah, right at the top of her hand there. Yep. Wow. Wow. Got it. Got it. Wow. Wow. Look at her fingers again. You know, in the hands. Yeah. Check I, out. Check out the uh, video that I did on the on the other Mona Lisa. I show precisely how all her fingers all her fingers on both hands were drawn they're they're all done with geometry well and yeah I, I well, place them all that's right them. well see and and rita just uh pointed out to me she says classic human faces and bodies in general are built in the golden ratio same as uh, the academic body and and uh, the vitruvian man that's exactly what we're talking about here these ratios are in play are fully in play sure because because doing doing a proper drawing uh using those natural uh divisions and stuff all all work together but but we can also see the in the minutia and the specific angles that really aren't necessarily in the the natural uh like the 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 year the, the angles that make up the years they're not necessarily uh, in art, you know, or, or, or proportions. They are more uh, very specific in, in specking out the year, you know, and the degrees in that circle. Now, let's um, go to, so, well, let's go to, let's jump ahead. Again, I'm looking at the clock, Ed. We've got a lot to yep. do. i got to get all this in. Keep us going, bro. Yeah, let's keep this going. <laughs> let's go to number 24, and which is... Uh, uh, Madonna and Child uh, with Joseph. Now, this is the thing. Um, I, you look at this before the grid overlay happens and looking at number 24, uh, knowing what we know now, you know that you can already see it. I've, I've already got the Ed Nightingale glasses on. I can I can already <laughs> see this laying out and happening. Uh, so let's uh, let me get this up in Twitter. And... Uh, Boom, done. How many uh, works of art did uh, did Da Vinci complete in his lifetime? It wasn't that many. Yeah, I, I believe it's in the 20s right. somewhere. I looked, and some of them are a little bit disputed, and they're not sure if they, if they were worked on by some of the students or, or whatever. But I, I think I've done, in, in my uh, in my uh, research here, I think I've gone through about 26, I think. Now, I have that I've looked at. Okay, let me. I only got. A, let me ask go you ahead. a question. Let me ask you a question. You've got a circle. Okay, so it, the original painting was a circle. Yes, yes. The original Leonardo painting is a circle. Correct. So, so that, we are. That, well, hold on, hold on. I, I, I just stay with me, Ed. Stay with me. This circle, because I've already seen image number twenty-five, right? This circle here is the painting. You didn't edit. Correct. Okay. Correct. Because what happens next in image number 25 should be illegal in most countries. Okay. <laughs> Bam. That's stupid, man. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what they were doing. It's, you know, there shouldn't be any, anybody who's following along here really shouldn't. <laughs> really have too much of a doubt of what I'm showing here. <laughs> and they need to contemplate the the uh, uh, the impact that this has or, or the, you know the the magnitude of what I'm showing here um, a it's, lot of people probably don't but they, they they ought to sit back look at it a little bit think about what I'm talking about here and um, this, this is this is large. crazy. Yeah, and this is a tip of the iceberg. You know, I've got multiple other artists that I've done, um, and architecture, and you know, other uh, you know, megalithic structures and places on on the planet. It, it's it's all over. It's all in our face. It's in, it's in our cities. It's in museums. It's in, it's, and there's a lot of people that know about this. This is Not crazy. More than you would think. And I, you know, and, uh, the child, now this is Joseph. This, I, I have, 
I'd have to go back and look. Is I mean, is this Jesus or is this? Yeah, that's yes. Yeah, um, uh, 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 who's the who, who baptized Jesus? John the Baptist. John the or is this John? Right, I think that it was all. Uh, well, what does it say there? Uh, I, well, it's it, it's Madonna it be, and I'm Child sure. with with Joseph. Now you got me wondering. Yeah, but but anyway, it doesn't matter. But look at look yeah. at the face of the child. That's it, it, is any of this in any doubt about what is going right. on? It shouldn't be. Yeah, it shouldn't be in any doubt. If anybody that that can honestly look at what I'm showing here, there should be no doubt by now, and we're not even near done. No. <laughs> Oh man, this is—I could look at this all day long. Every constellation is is in composition on this painting. Every single one is determining something. Wow! Wow! One of, this this one this actual image is a good one to look at too. I want you to, everybody just for for a future uh, image here. Just take note of the the smaller circle in the bottom right corner that that you can see Sirius kind of touching the edge of the circle. Right. Okay. Well, just just uh, it, this is a good image to show that circle. So I just wanted to point that out. This will come into play later. Incredible. This is this is just absolutely mind blowing. Okay, let's. Uh... Let's move on to number 26. Oh, here we go. See, I already see it now. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I yeah, already it's, see it. It's logical. You'll, you'll notice once you see a pattern, and that's what was happening with me as I realized the template had these you know, specific, specific angles and patterns. I started seeing it in the art, and I just decided, hey, uh, maybe that's what they were doing. And I was right. It was so, quite a moment, I gotta tell you. And this is Virgin on the Rocks, and again, is this is this Jesus and John the Baptist? Yes, they're I, they're together here. Um, this is primed and ready to go. This is already. Good. You can <laughs> see that. All right, hold on. Let me get this in here before I pull the trigger. Okay, here we go. Let's pull the trigger. Bam. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Look at man. that, man. You, you, know, you can't make that up. Right? No, no, you can't. And of course, <laughs> it, it, it is about all the figures here. Um, uh, uh, you know, Virgin, which is Mary, and her right eye uh, going down. But it's it follow the outside circle uh, with the uh, with the Fibonacci sequences and and how that fits in the. But but look at the constellations. Again, yeah. it's just that is wow. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to spend the rest of my days just uh, doing paintings like this around stuff like that. I mean, it just just the uh, the level of art. I mean, it's one thing to to paint a beautiful picture, but it's another to you know do it like this and well, encode so this knowledge, and it's amazing. Now, uh, so that's Jesus on the right, and that's uh, John the Baptist on the left, I believe. Look, I'm not some art historian. I believe that's what's going on here. But look, if, if let's say that that's John the Baptist. Okay, everybody blow up the picture and look at, because they're, uh, the, the two children are looking at each other. One is in prayer, and one is doing the sign, right? But look at John the Baptist's hand and the mm-hmm. formation and the origination of uh, the Fibonacci. And I'm t- telling everybody to go down and look between uh, Leo and Regulus right there. And look at the origination of everything, um, the composition of the face. And you just tell me that that is by accident. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why I want to hear somebody <laughs> try to dispute this because I don't think anybody in their right mind would really. I mean, if they look at it enough, they, it would be very difficult to deny these uh, relationships. Wow, that is just incredible to me. That is just incredible. Well, it's a hell of a story, Jimmy. That's all I can tell you. Wow. It's a hell of a story. 
Okay, let me look at the clock. Let's uh, let's get this up to uh, image twenty eight. Uh, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to image number 28, which is uh, uh, Vin, uh, St. Anne, right? What yeah. vir- Virgin mm-hmm. Child and St. Anne? Is that what that says? Correct. Yeah, I believe so, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me get this up in Twitter before I pull the trigger. I'm, I want to be blown away at the same time <laughs> as everybody else is. There we go. It's up in Twitter, and let's pull the trigger. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's uh, it's once again. I see what what I'm doing with each one of these, and I understand that there's a date and a time and and everything else. But I'm going around and looking at the existing uh, overlay in the background, right? Each time with the golden ratio, how it intersects back into the new image. But I'd like to go around and look at each of these constellations and see how they are uh, composited into uh, the painting itself. That's 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 crazy talk. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, again, it's amazing. And, and, and look at, you know, the placement of the, of the feet once again and, and look at the right arm of the child, you know, um, and, if, and 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 the relationship to the the constellation there too. I mean, the uh, the baby sheep, the baby sheep is is yeah. completely uh, uh, <laughs> laid out uh, with the constellations, the entire body. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And and the nose of of, of that is right in right in that. Do you see that the 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 constellation there that looks like a pentagon yeah, yeah, that's yeah. attached to the horn of the the bull. Mm-hmm. That star that on the tip of the horn of the bull, that star that also creates that pentagon shaped. Uh, that's that's the constellation of Auriga. That is the only star in all the constellations that share two constellations, and that's also. Right, the, one of the closest stars to the anti center of the galaxy. Gotcha. Gotcha. So Man, it's, it's all very, you know, very precise and, 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 uh, wow, this is beautiful. Explaining this whole layout of this great year. Yeah, this the is the great cool. year has got a lot more to tell us than, than what we've been, you know, there's a lot of people that, do work on the great year and all that, but I'm telling you, they need to look at what I've got here because this explains it all. Well, and it, it, it's very detailed. Yeah. There's something else that, that I've noticed in, 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 in the paintings. Uh, we always gravitate towards the eyes and the face and the nose and, and, and the body and, and the beauty of it. Right. And I get that. I understand that. Okay. But I've been looking at the background, you know, at the trees, mm-hmm. at the, yeah. you know, what's going on in the background, and it's it's all there. It's right. it's not right. just There's really not much of the painting at all that isn't done specifically around a coordinate. I mean, look at this here. You know, just go and look at the trees, look at the background, and it's all there. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Okay, looking at the clock. Okay, let's see if we can get to 30 and at least uh, get us started here. This is uh, Benoit Madonna. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the eyes and the nose before I pull the trigger here. Yeah. And, yep. uh, and I can already see it playing out. I can already see it. I can already see it. Okay, here I go, everybody. It's up. Let's pull the trigger. And uh, we've got uh, two minutes. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. I it mean. It's, it's beyond, uh, to me, it's just beyond beautiful. It's it's just, uh, th- these. this is some of the most elegant and beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. And I really take no credit for this. This, 
this was done by masters and uh, I don't know who or what or when this even all originated, but it's staggering. It'd be beautiful. I mean, it's like look at the what um, a story. Yeah, 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 yeah. And look at uh, in the child's leg um, that is up on her lap. And look at the top of the thigh in the hip. Uh, and then look at the constellations going up, not only constructing, uh, you know, all of the child here, but look at the hands and they just continue up all the way through. The obvious things are the yellow lines going through the eyes and intersecting at the hands where the hands all are joined together in the center. Uh, I mean, that is just crazy to, to look at this. But but go on the outside and look at what is happening uh, uh, with the constellations and the features of each point of interest in the face. The nose, the eyes, the cheeks, the ears. It's perfect. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Huh. Yeah, incredible. Again, the background, uh, the halos here too. Oh man, that's that's it's <laughs> beautiful. Her her arm, yeah, uh, Madonna's arm. It's uh, wow. Her hand, uh, her hand behind the child is one thing uh, because it's perfect. I mean, it's obvious. Look at the constellation yeah. behind her hand, behind the child. How how that it just lays in there. But go to the other side where the uh, 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 Pleiades is with Taurus. Look at her elbow, the arm, the constellations, the intersection, the outside of her body. Again, the green circle uh, from the original. Look at, oh, man, that, that's, <laughs> that's incredible. Okay, I'm 30 seconds late. Let's uh, jump to a commercial right here. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Ed Nightingale and his presentation of Leonardo da Vinci. And the Giza template. Absolutely incredible evening. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Sorry, it's getting carried away. Playing Freebird on the Lowe's Paul during the break. Couldn't help myself tonight. Ed Nightingale is here. 2019 is the 500th anniversary of the death of Leonardo da Vinci, and we are going through the great works of uh, Leonardo uh, using the Giza template that uh, Ed has written about in his book, The Giza Template. And the links for everything are over at uh, JimmyChurchRadio.com. And if you are following uh, following along with us, each of these images is up in Twitter. Go to hashtag F2B, and you can follow along with us. Uh, we've got a lot to go uh, in very little time. Uh, Ed, we're going to run this right up to the end of the, the night tonight. You can already see this coming. We've done this every single time we've been on the show. We're <laughs> at image number uh, 32, Madonna of the Coronation. And uh, here we go. again. Okay, so before we pull the trigger... And go bam! I I I already know uh, the some of the things, but I want to take a look at these arches. I want to see what's going to happen uh, with these arches in the background here. That's going to be pretty interesting. Okay, here we go. Let me get this up in Twitter. Am I going to see something in these arches, Ed? Yeah, I think you'll see um, where the where the position is relative to coordinates within the. Oh, it's template. perfect. And yeah, it's, it's perfect. It's very possible, too, that there's there's certain uh, layers of the template that I don't have activated here. So if it doesn't show on this layer, there's a very good chance it might show in another, like another division of the grid or another uh, part of the template. Because I couldn't show it all at once. It gets a little too busy. Right. But uh, Yep, it's all here. Absolutely. Wow. I, again, I, you know, you just go to uh, uh, the center of the painting and, and just go out from there. It's the arms, it's the feet, it's the legs. Um, and uh, wow, the faces, the eyes, 
the, uh, wow. Huh. Yeah, there's. I mean, you, you lose count of how many points of of uh, you know where the relevant uh, coordinates and and the artwork just in one painting, uh, and you multiply that by you know how many paintings. It's so far beyond. Uh, even considering it coincidence, it's uh... oh, it's carnation, not coronation. It's carnation. Um, uh, Rita corrected me. I apologize for that. I don't have my glasses on. Uh, wow. You know, and so I wanted to look at the arches, and with the blue grid that is there on every single one, that is completely lined up with the with uh, the blue grid, um, the yeah. top of it is perfect. Again, I keep going back to look at uh, uh, look at the constellations building her face. That is just incredible. Look at the constellation yeah. uh, uh, constructing the child's body all the way down. A a every every last bit of it, the arms, the hands, the fingers. Incredible. Her yeah. hand. It's, it's wow, man. Yeah. You know, and you look and you look at, uh, it's, you know, what's really trippy about this uh, particular painting. And I've seen it already uh, without going backwards. But you look at the specific highlights of uh, what Leonardo is, is doing here, the little drops of white paint where he's highlighting certain parts of of the painting. And there's a frigging star right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man. And you wonder, if that, is that Leonardo or, or a star? And then you go, oh, holy crap, it's both. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's why I say that the, I've, I've been looking at these for a long time, and I could just get, I could sit here and look at this stuff for hours on end, and just keep finding new little nuances in there that I never even noticed. You know, the the first hundred times I looked at it, right, you know, right, right. It's really amazing. Wow, incredible, incredible. Okay, what we're at uh, thirty three, so let's go to thirty four. Oh, are really? Okay. All right. Now, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, so this is the Last Supper, and I had been wondering about this. And now, to do this correctly, because this is painted on a wall, so uh, the ratio again uh, to do the overlay, the ratio is what on the original well, the painting to fit it onto the grid. The width, the width of it was the width of the the square template, the nine by nine, the, the original nine by nine template, which is then divided. You know, they, they he divided it up into different proportions, and he used uh, again the thirty three division of the grid uh, for this painting um, in its height and uh, the the full width of the nine by nine for the the width. I mean, yeah, the height is 33 divisions, and the width is is the full width of the square. Okay. Is... Time to pull the trigger. Okay, I'm going to blow this up. There's a lot going on here. Yes, there is. You'll see the faces in the 33 uh, grid. Um... Huh. Okay, what are the highlights for you here as I as I go through this? Okay, well if you if you start looking at the the we'll just start with the individuals faces and stuff. You can see how they all nicely are placed within that uh grid of 33. And then uh if you start at the left side of the the painting and you look at the tops of the heads of the the three individuals you can see that orange line that, that touched the top of uh, the, each, the three of those, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. their heads. That is another division of the circle of division of five. Remember, we looked at the Mona Lisa. She right. had a, a, a division of five going through her eye. Um, the top of his their heads are at the other division of five. Now, let me just, just drop a little bit of a, uh, of a point here that angle 
that the tops of those heads are at. If zero degrees is is at uh, to our right side of the image where north is, um, and we go around 177.6 degrees, that is the angle of that division of five. Now, if we drop the decimal point, we end up with 1776. And if you think that that's some kind of an accident or coincidence that 1776 happens to be the date of the founding of our country, you would be mistaken because it's not a coincidence. <laughs> and that we could go into a whole nother show on. Um, the, the, the founding of our country is based upon this template. The founding fathers were aware of that. Uh, 1733 was the founding year of the Masons in America. The address of the Scottish Rite House of the Temple template in Washington, D.C. is 1733. And again, I mentioned and showed and presented in one of, one of the other shows I did with you that 17 degrees and 33 degrees were positions um, within Orion and its nebula at very, very specific points of geometry and, and dates of, of uh, the, the, Hebrew, the beginning of the Hebrew year, for one. And uh, it doesn't get any... Uh, oh, also, that 1733 I did mention, I did a show with you on Oak Island. Right. And I, I explained to you that the beginning of the Hebrew year, um, these, the angle and position of Orion's nebula at 17 degrees and 33 degrees um, related to the position of the, the Triangle Swamp in Oak Island. And if you've been watching the show this year, that's all coming right into play. And I'm very disappointed I haven't heard anything from, from them about that, but... It, it, this is all part of the same template. They all knew about this. This is all the Knights Templar, uh, and, and Knights of the Templar uh, is, is translated to Knights of the Temple, or the word temple is the word template. Temple and template are the same word, the same uh, origin. So we can fit this all together, and uh, as we look at the Last okay. Supper here, you know, let's uh, um, if the the three disciples on the left, okay, and then there's the famous hand that that shows up, you know, uh, right there. Now, right below the hand, to the right of the third disciple, where you have a, the torso there in blue which is completely constructed by that constellation. That, yeah. that, that is freaky deaky, man. Yeah. That, well, again, you know, it's the same thing. They were, they were deliberately doing this. They were encoding this knowledge of, of this great year within these paintings. And if you look um, at, at the hands of Christ, where they're located and, uh, yeah, I'm there right now. It, yeah, it gets uh, there's a whole other level to this that uh, people might even be a little um, uh, well. It, it's it opens a whole other level to this, but these angles um, are ratios of which that this whole movement takes place and, and these numbers are very relevant in our life and uh, I'd rather maybe won't get into it tonight but it would almost require a whole other show to, to get into that but uh, the placement of his hands are uh, very very important uh, well you know what else is you know you know what else is going on here uh, is the well first off the start of the Fibonacci where the doorway is that's mm -hmm. that I'm 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 going back and forth here uh, uh, over that and that's pretty interesting but the but when you blow this up 
and you go across, I, I encourage everybody to do what I'm doing here. Look at every plate and cup on the table. Yeah. Yeah. All the way across. Mm-hmm. What the... Yeah, if you notice the top of the table also is the is, top is of the, the table. division of the Phi or Fibonacci uh, measurement in the, in the square there. Well, see, I was going to bring that up, but, uh, and, and you can see it, right? And, and not only the yeah. top of the, you know, the front edge and stuff, that could be just because it's elegant and it's a great painting and it's straight and it's aligned and he... Uh, and he had it, he just had good artistic sense or <laughs> but i saw or that you, can, right. <laughs> you count all the other coincidences right all right but it's every plate and cup all the way across the front of the table that's uh, uh that is that's crazy that's beautiful man well okay now let's let's go to the obvious here before we move on uh to 36 um, and now I bounced back and forth here uh, a couple of times uh, just to check this. Uh, obviously, the center of everything here is at the center of this painting, which is the middle window of the background. And, of course, Jesus's head is oriented uh, in the middle of the middle window. This has been talked about. Uh, by artistic scholars for years and it's it's you know it's where your eyes are, are attracted in this painting but it's also placed uh specifically on this grid for a reason and then you reveal the grid and sure enough at the very center of this painting is the alignment of the center of the grid now, is this because it's great artistic sense, and that was the intentional center of the peer, uh, of, of the painting by Leonardo, and of course it would be the center of this grid, or is there something else that just uh, aligns this like it is now because it's per- frigging bleeping perfect? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's probably a little bit of both. It's also beautiful in its artistic uh, proportions. But they're also, again, showing, you know, it, within this this uh, template, it, it's inherently got these uh, beautiful proportions. But again, add in, you know, all the alignments of all the cups and the plates and the heads and the and and all the constellations how that all line up. Uh, you know, it's, again, it, it's it's beyond beyond chance look at the top of the circle of the ecliptic there it's right at the top of yeah. the ceiling yeah yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah it's all there yeah. it's all there yeah 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 incredible okay all right let's go to number 36 which is bacchus yes well, I, I think there might be some controversy as to whether leonardo did this or some of his underlings but at this point it really doesn't matter um what, what we're interested in is you know the composition of the, of the artwork but i thought this was such a, a a perfect example of of you know what we're showing you look at how he's pointing just look at his positions there you know what I, I often wondered, you know, back before I even had an inkling on all this, I always wondered, why are they pointing this stuff? You know, why why do these guys always paint stuff that are people are pointing, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, okay, okay, before so. before I pull the trigger, uh, looking at the placement of this painting on the grid, uh, I know I'm going to see some amazing alignments. I'm going to go crazy town. But why is this not centered in a specific? Why is it placed on the grid this way? Yeah, why is? I think it's just really an artistic uh, option and and how they wanted to do it, and they could have even uh, sketched it up and figured, well, you know, if they want to have the guy sitting in that position and and the width of it uh, and have where his fingers would be. Um, you know, who knows? They might have even uh, put the uh, size of the canvas in after they did some preliminary sketches, or you know, there, there's it's just artistic uh, imagination. I think that uh, they they did all these. Just uh, it's like you know, if you're given this assignment in an art class, here's the template. 
you know, you understand the template, you know the certain positions, geometry and coordinates within the template that we're trying to, uh, you know, encode in these paintings. So use your imagination and come up with a drawing or painting, whatever that uh, shows this. So it's really just, I think, just artistic. Okay, and and now some would say that, uh, especially a painting like this, that you can reduce the size and and move it around until it fits on this grid, and it, and it, you just have come up with something cool, right? And yeah, I'm talking about we would have had to come up with something cool for a lot of pictures with a lot of points of coordinates. But we can, yeah. Well, let's assume that. Okay. Okay. But, okay. Because well, well, the the other ones are centered, right? This one is not. Right. Not all of them. Not all of them. Okay. So actually, they're not. Okay. There's several of them there that that were slightly offset, not as much as this one. But right. Okay. Um, okay. Let's let's go. I'm pulling the trigger. Come on. Okay. All right. So we've got the feet, the hands, the legs, the pointing, the angle. Uh, uh. <laughs> you know, and, and let's let's oh, look at the man. let's look at the bottom left corner of that. Uh, that's where I'm looking. The, the, the yeah. Corner. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Look where that touches the spiral there, and the, and right at the bottom of the edge of the painting. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, it would be the bottom left corner of the painting. You see where that, that that's a very significant point on this whole thing, and that is where um, if if you were to uh, that's a 23 and a half degree angle that touches the spiral that then uh, goes up to the left. You can see that uh, yellow or light colored line there. That's the wall of the crow in, in on the Giza plateau. That, that, that's right, all right, part right, of this. right, 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 so right, right. So that's a significant right. point on that left side of that painting, why it was put there, because it's lined up with that very significant point there. That's, uh, that's incredible. Okay, let me, uh, we got two minutes. Okay, so let me look at the fingers here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's stupid. <laughs> Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's great, uh, great imagination and uh, well. Look at the ratios excellent. on the look at the ratios on the face once again. Um, yeah, uh, uh, but you can't ignore the feet here, and that's both of yeah. them. Uh, that <laughs> the angles of the legs, the everything. toes again. Once yeah, again. yeah, yeah. The knee, the knee. Look at the constellations uh, around the feet and. And the knee, wow, that's 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 beautiful. That's the absolutely angle of the beautiful. foot there. That's making up the other angle yep. that points right to the sun. Yep, yep, is, yep. yep. You know, I mean, it's multiple. You know, it's all there. It's wow, that's incredible. Uh, the right elbow, but but yep. I you know it's 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 the fingers. It's the palm of the hand. It is all of the fingers. It's the angle of the pointing. Uh, that's on both hands, the knuckles of the finger. Wow, man, man. Yeah, yeah the, the man. more you look, the more you're going to see. Yeah. And also notice the top left-hand corner of that painting touches the spiral. Yes, I saw that. Yes, perfectly, by the way. Per yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yes, there's no room. Once you look, because they use different points, it wasn't necessarily all just grid alignment. For the uh, the canvas or, or, or the portrait size, it was it was points of which are obvious when you see it. Well, I, like I, 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 yeah, and you know what? I keep going back to these constellations, and especially when you blow it up, like I've got it here, uh, I've got it huge, and and just looking at the constellations uh, uh, versus the composition of the painting, it's that's uh, this is incredible. I, I'm not a little bit. I'm not even well, sure what's my favorite uh, situation here now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, 
Yeah, they're all beautiful. Yeah, I mean, they're all God. really well done. Okay, we've got to take a break here in a second. I'll warm everybody up. Uh, coming up next is... Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Rita already posted it. It's John the Baptist. Okay, thanks, Rita. I wanted to surprise everybody, but there you go. Okay, so... You can go ahead and do that. We'll do John the Baptist, and uh, we're going to take a break right here. You guys look at John the Baptist. We'll talk about it when we come back. Our guest tonight is Ed Nightingale. And (laughs) come on, Ed. This ain't real. This this, is just coincidence. It can't be, man. It can't be. Let's take our break right here. Our guest tonight, Ed Nightingale. We are doing Leonardo da Vinci and the Giza template, all of it. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be covering John the Baptist. This is Faded Block on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. You can follow everything that we are doing right now on Twitter. Just follow me at J Church Radio. Hashtag F2B. We'll pick this up where we're leaving off. We've got one segment left. This is Faded Black. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. Faded Black. I'm real Jimmy Church tonight at Nightingale. We're doing Leonardo da Vinci and the Giza Template. Whoo, man, the great works of Leonardo and all of them overlaid uh, uh, by the Giza template and going through this. We're up to image number uh, 38 and 39, which is John the Baptist, a very, very famous painting. Mo- I, most of these uh, we have uh, seen and loved before. And now with John the Baptist, one of his most famous works, um, uh, I'm good. I'm just going to hand this off to you. What are the highlights for you as I scan around? Well, obviously, I mean, where he's pointing is is uh, you know, the the big deal there, and uh, it was one of his, I think, his last uh, major piece that he did. Uh, I also think it's the most obvious one. Um, there's really not too much. Uh, that he's leaving out here is he's very specifically pointing and he's you know just and look at the look and uh, expression on his face aha and, uh, yeah it's pretty cocky aha check this out yeah. right here okay so obviously uh right at the exact uh tip of his uh index finger is is a star and what and and an intersection of just about everything on this grid, by the way. Um, wh- what is there? What is he pointing at? Okay, well, if you if you go to image thirty nine, there we kind of pull the trigger. That is the sun. He's pointing at the sun. <laughs> That's where it is on the horizon on December twenty first, twenty twelve. That is the image. Of where the sun is and where it intersects, that's the that's what all those angled lines are pointing to is the sun. And the word sun we need to think about here in 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 a little broader sense. Um, and what John the Baptist was teaching, and why there was such a hubbub about what they were teaching. Um. They were teaching this material, John the Baptist and and others, and it was not looked upon favorably by the church at the time. And uh, there's a there's a whole whole other story that goes along with all this, and and I think these last couple images will will start making that a little bit more obvious and look at all the paintings we are looking at what are what are most of them paintings of well let's 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 talk about that in a second but there's a couple of other things here that uh uh are ridiculous and that is uh the constellations in general um and the uh, the angle of, and the ratios of his face, 
and the angles of the eye, but then look at the constellation uh, because the constellations, because if you look at the zodiac here, um, if you go back to the original painting, you go back to 38, there is a very gentle arc that happens from the tip of his finger on the outside of his hand in the in the shadow of his arm around his elbow back to his back and his shoulder right okay so look at that gentle arch and then go back to uh 39 and look at the constellations uh laying out perfectly his wrist the tips of his fingers his elbows the outside of the arm all the way through uh, to uh, the, the entire body is represented here. Yeah, the the ecliptic is is basically the, his arm is, is shaped and and goes around the ecliptic um, with the tip of his finger pointing at the sun on the ecliptic um, at uh, you know that that date and time all the way around and, and the ecliptic uh, the ratio. Uh, with the eyes and the forehead and the top of the head, the the the, the composition of the painting uh, is that it's the ecliptic with the sun at yeah. the tip of the finger. Yeah, wow, yeah. that's incredible. That's and incredible. Again, the, the, right between his eyes, if you look at the intersection of that orange line and the yellow line, is right in between his eyes. Yep. It's actually three points of intersection. Three there. points right there. Um, yeah. You know, it's a division of the circle of five once again, um, showing the, the that, that the uh, you know the twenty five thousand nine hundred and twenty uh, year of our. Uh, of the, the the great year of the of our pole uh, change in our pole, uh, it's divided into five, making them about. Uh, well, if you divide twenty five thousand nine twenty by five, you get fifty one eighty four, which is the angle of the Great Pyramid, but also five thousand one hundred twenty seven, which is an adjusted number that we we looked at on the angle. That's the white line that goes from the center to the picture up to the sun, which also goes back down and is part of a leg on that number five division and his shoulder. And so now, all... okay. So one would argue that looking at this painting, what was, what was Leonardo asking you to do? Uh, look at the finger at what he's pointing. That's obvious. There's the eyes, the obvious in the face, but I would say it's the V. It's the V on the inside of the arm and the inside of the elbow. That yeah, That really. is where he is asking you to look. That, that, I'm just, you know, the obvious is the obvious, the tip of the finger, right? He's pointing at something. Yeah. Okay. And, and the eyes, the smirk, there's all of that. But it's the V, okay? The V that is happening here. And the bottom of the V... And the inside of the elbow is the bleeping crown of the Sphinx. Yeah, it's the 25,920-year mark. Wow, that is insane. That, that maroon, <clears throat> excuse me, purple line is 259.2 degrees, which is the, the head of the right. Sphinx. Right. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the year of the great year. That's crazy. So that's he's crazy. pointing and telling us, you know, this is the great year and the the 12 o'clock hour on the great year, how it all aligns and it can be read and understood is by the galactic alignment, which happened in 2012. <laughs> it's right smack dab at that V. Yeah, there's no there's no guessing. There's no, no, no. There's no. no. No coincidence no, here. This no, is I've, really specific. I've uh, looked at it extremely enlarged. That's trippy. That's trippy. There's no question about anything. Okay, let's go to number forty. Number forty, okay. which is uh, oh, <laughs> it's Monday. Okay, Salvatore Monday. Ah, yeah. this painting was just sold. Yes, for four hundred and fifty million dollars. <laughs> yes, I believe it was just sold, and it's. And it's somewhere, uh, not everybody's sure where it even is right now. There's no, nobody knows uh, the news mis about this painting. Yeah. 
Yeah, the 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 anonymous buyer that ponied yeah. up a half a billion dollars for this. Um, yeah. You and I have discussed this painting many times, and I, I, I it, it's absolutely beautiful. It has got more symbolism in it than probably anything else that uh, Leonardo ever did. I mean, there is yeah. tons of yeah. stuff here. All right, yeah, let's go. Let's pull the trigger. Here we go. Okay. Let's go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, Dang. so so wait a minute here. Okay, let me blow this up. The crystal ball is 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 that perfectly lined up? Yes, with the circle that with I the circle out earlier in yeah. the bottom right corner. Right, that is the orbit of Sirius. <laughs> Sirius is moving around in that circle. If we were to take that star program and we would turn the clock back fifty two thousand years, Sirius would no longer be in. Uh, uh, Canis Major, Sirius would be located in uh, Canis Minor, which is around that circle. About about if you were to go clockwise, it would be around there about at about the nine o'clock position, somewhere around there. Canis. Yeah, about the. There's just a little line there. I actually have Canis uh, Minor in there. It's. Just above nine o'clock, uh, you see a little line there. Yep, that's yep, where yep. Sirius would be mm-hmm. fifty-two thousand years ago. Mm. So that's the orbit of Sirius. They're showing us the orbit of Sirius, and also I need to point out, and I didn't really put it in this image, but if we were to do um, Vesica Pisces uh, uh, circles on this, we would see that. Uh, the, the Vesica Pisces, um, if we did the full circle, it would pass directly through Sirius. And if we did our our uh, ecliptic circle, it would pass through the nebula of Orion. You know, so, this is. This, I'm going to stop you right there. This is this is this is bleeping nuts. Okay, I'm going back and forth here. I, okay, I'm just clicking back and forth. The entire painting is the Giza template. Every yeah. single ratio, yeah. every Fibonacci, every constellation, everything with the face, the eyes, the chin, the nose, the mouth, the lips, the hands, the pointing, the fingers, the thumbs, the wrist, uh, the shirt. The curls and his hair. The curl. <laughs> yes. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every single thing is here now let's go up uh rita uh uh, she's got 42 here too as well okay so let's jump up to 42 which is doesn't have the background it's cleaned up and uh so i'm going to hand off 42 to you as i look around in amazement here yeah i just wanted to to kind of clean it up a little bit so we can especially look at the sphere that he's holding in his left hand I mean, everybody that I've known that's looked at this, they always say, wonder about this glass ball that he's, or sphere that he has in his left hand. Well, look closely there. That is the circle that, that is part of the template that shows the, the, the orbit of Sirius as Sirius moves around in a circular motion on its spiral path. Which it, is exact the diameter. Yes. Yeah, this is precision stuff we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exact, I, exact. I challenge I challenge any uh professor or uh you know any expert in art or uh any of the subjects that we're talking about here. I challenge anyone into a, to a, a debate uh you know just a reasonable debate here and you know if if they have any questions uh, allow me the opportunity to even show more information and back up because we're only touching on it. This is a tip of the iceberg. Right. Right. And what you're seeing here is, uh, can be backed up by a lot more evidence. Any questions that might arise? I think I have the answers already, uh, in, in, in the research here. It's already complete. And I, I'd really like to but look at the Have face. Look at, the, look at this. See, this is, this is what's crazy. I mean, there's a lot crazy here. 
There's a lot that is crazy. But when you just start the orientation of everything off of the face, the eyes, the center of the nose, right down through the center of the lips, the center of his chin, to the center of the painting, and then you go down, and that overlay is exact over the sphere. That yes. that's well, I, it, it's it's beyond these words. Awesome. These people were brilliant who who, who designed Whew. this template to begin with. I mean, it's beyond uh, when you really comp, try to comprehend this to its core. It's 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 wow doesn't even <laughs> come close to it. Wow. It's, wow. It's mind boggling. You know, did the chicken or the egg come first? Like, how did someone figure all this out right. and then you can see these artisans that understood it and, and a lot of these guys i shouldn't say a lot but a, a number of them have figured it out all on their own and i'm one of them and i know there was others um you know ed lee scowling from coral castle um i should do a show with you on coral castle i could show you exactly what ed ed was doing there with the template he he figured it out himself just like i did so uh, the, this last painting, which is Raphael, uh, the School of Athens, uh, why this painting? Why this painting? Because the, the point I was trying to make in, with this painting is that um, this was known by all these different men, Plato, Aristotle, Pythagoras. Um, they were all in on this. And if you look at this painting, it's showing you that. And, and it, Again, look close up at that, and and it is again you know, beyond uh, uh, you know question of uh, what they were all doing. These men at these schools, and you know, it's the ancient uh, Egyptian mystery schools that had this knowledge. Um, where it came from, I don't I don't care to get in that debate really. Uh, but we we can all agree on one thing that they whoever it was left us some really pertinent information here that is relative in our time right now. This is what all these paintings, uh, this template, are pointing to this this galactic alignment, and this is how. Uh, I mean, just like a clock has twelve o'clock, you need to, you know you need to to set that, that, that marker point and the, the galactic alignments are these marker points. And again, within specific geometry of this motion over the period of, of actually the, the galactic alignment is 52,000 years long um, to get to that same constellation in the background with the, uh, um, galactic alignment would take 52,000 years. The pole takes 26,000 years to go around. So I, I have a uh, really would like to work with uh, uh, an astrophysicist here and do some calculations on uh, the, the wobble of the Earth theory uh, for the pole movement um, is false. It's, it's, it's just not backed up by uh, measurement. I've, tr- I've tried for over 10 years to have somebody show me um, how they can measure the wobble of the earth measured against the sun. It, they can't do it because it doesn't wobble against the background of the sun. And the reason is that the sun is moving in a circular motion that gives us the illusion of our pole wobbling. And now in, in this painting here uh, by Raphael, uh, the which is not Leonardo, right? This is Raphael. No, correct, correct. Um, I to, yeah. yeah. So you'd have to show the but we have uh, uh, Apollo is here, Alexander the Great, uh, Aristotle, um, Athena, uh, right? Uh, or Minerva. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking through, but everybody is here um, without naming everybody that's in the painting. But let's talk about, I've got five minutes uh, before uh, we we get into da- danger zone and I have to roll credits. 
Um, we've got some major intersections. We got the sun. We everybody knows now where the sun is and and the ecliptic and where it's represented. Again, the center of everything. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, Regulus and the Sphinx. I'm talking about the center of everything is again w at the center of the painting. But the ecliptic and the constellations and the zodiac are pretty interesting here. So let's see if we can get uh, this in in the next five minutes. Let's let's start with the sun. Okay. Well, the the sun is up in the in the is placed in a corner there of where where there's like a a, a capital a corner specific placement. Um, the if if you look, let's see. I'm trying to see here. I'll get blown up here. I don't have my get blown up. But all right. Yeah, there is a lot going on. Yeah, there is a I'll lot you, going. The the most the most obvious one you can see, which is easily seen, is look at look at again at the spiral uh, down in, in where Regulus is. And how that spiral is. Uh, I, I don't have the names of the people on my copy here, um, but um, I'm not sure who the person is. Right there in the spiral, you can see there where, where Leo is, and it, within the spiral. I mean, if you, you look at that, and it's just unbelievable. And I think that's over on the left is Pythagoras, where his his tablet, where he's writing. Uh, I mean, it's. The more you look, once again, it's it's the same thing. You know, they're they're all relative. Um, I think there's probably a few other layers that I could add to this that would give it even more uh, alignments that I don't, I might not have in this uh, particular grid setup. Yeah, but the fifth angle, Leonardo, but. The, the fifth angle of the circle. Right, yep. just bouncing off the top of everybody's heads right in a row again yeah. in again. in, in, in right. a separate yeah. painting, right? And yes. that's uh, that's by a completely different artist. So yeah, completely different artist. They all do it. These guys do it, and they were they were doing it in secret, and they were keeping it, uh, keeping this knowledge, uh, you know, passing it on in this manner, and. Uh, there's really no denying it. It's it's there, and uh, what we need at this point is to really. Uh, there's a lot of other researchers that would benefit greatly by understanding what I'm talking about here. That tie so many things together and answer so many questions. Um, that it, it just needs to be uh, looked in a little bit more. Um, yeah, but again, it's 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 a repetition of everything that we have been talking about tonight, which is uh, the constellations completely uh, tying together the composition of what the painting is. And you go around here and you look at every single constellation in the zodiac um, around the ecliptic, and it is. Spot on, spot on. You know what? I, you know what I'd like to do, Jimmy. Sometime we'll do a show, and what I can do is I can actually show how each of the constellations were laid out. Um, we can just start out with a with a rough uh, template, and I can go around constellation by constellation and show you every asterism, which is a, a single line within those constellation. Um, uh, the, the figures there, we can show why they were using those specific stars and what they were pointing to and how they were done. I did it on the seasons of the great year. I did with you. I did some of that. Yes. Yes, we did. We did, yes. we did do a little, if anybody wants to look at some of the past shows that we did, uh, I think they'll answer a lot more questions. And I have a, a couple there's an article or two on my website that uh, you can look at. That's on uh, Graham Hancock's site. Um, the Leo, the Leo Orion uh, uh, connection. Uh, that's a good article that can, explains a little bit more in detail uh, this map that I'm. I'm uh, 
put it forth. Yeah. There is uh, one thing that, uh, as I'm, I'm looking at this more and more, I'm looking at it really blown up, everybody. But if you go, uh, the one of the focal points of this painting, and it's obvious, is the arch, the, the three arches that you see here. Uh, there's the foreground arch, then there's this middle arch, not the background arch at the center of the painting with the intersection. I get that. But the middle arch, right, number two, the shadow of the arch, that the alignments that are happening with that are pretty redunculous. Th that That is, that's incredible. I mean, it's it, it's not. Uh, you just look. It's 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 all of the angles, all the intersections. Uh, it's it's at the center. It 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 lines up with the grid. It's the top of the arch. It's the bottom of the arch. Um, and you and you just look at the angles coming in from all sides. Look, the obvious things are here, right? It's the fifth degree of the circle. And it's uh, the ecliptic, and, and yes, and the constellations, and you go around. But look at the arch, you know. Yeah, and so yeah. when everything else is lining up, and it, it all of the, <laughs> every single one of these figures has got a constellation tied to it, by the way, um, yeah. all the way around. But then go and look at the arch, and the arch is just sitting there perfectly lined up, uh, the middle arch, um, with the rest of... Uh, uh, the math. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Ed, yeah. what a show tonight, my man. All right. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I hope everybody else did. And, and uh, you know, look into it a little bit closer here. Uh, you know, I, I offer, uh, you know, any, anybody wants to contact me and, uh, you know, dig a little deeper into this. Uh, some experts out there that would like to uh, know a little bit more about this. I'd like to... Uh, be, you know, contact me through my website, and uh, I hope everybody out there would be interested enough to purchase my book and uh, have a look there. That's the foundation. Um, I'll be out with my new book. I'm hoping within uh, next six months or so. I'm just so busy at work and uh, yeah, yeah. We understand that. Forward. We understand that and appreciate it. And uh, Ed and I, if uh, if you know. Uh, a curator at a museum, an art historian, uh, a professional, a, a certainly a professional with Leonardo and the Italian greats. Um, uh, if you know somebody, uh, have them reach out to us. We are actively looking uh, for some professionals to take a look at this very important work. We need their opinions, too. So you can certainly get a hold of me. You can get a hold of Ed over at thegizatemplate.com. Uh, Ed is very accessible out there, so you can reach out to either one of us, and uh, let's continue this exciting work. Thank you so much, Ed. What a great show Jimmy, tonight. Yeah, Jimmy, thank you very much. You've been, uh, you've been a real big supporter here, and I appreciate you having me on, and I enjoy talking and uh, hope to do so in the future. Thank you so much, Ed. Enjoy the rest of your night. Great show tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank Take you. Care now. Thank you, Ed. Ed Nightingale. And with that, we ran. You knew we were going to do this. We ran right up against it. So I'm going to get out of here. We will put it together a video with everything here and all of the images, and we'll get it up there as soon as we can. And there you go. In the meantime, if you're listening to this, you can go back to hashtag F2B and see all of the images. Ed's website is thegizatemplate.com. The links are at jimmychurchradio.com. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Camarion. Show is produced by Hill J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. And syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast is only copyrighted 2019 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Big thank you to Ed Nightingale. I'll see everybody tomorrow night for Fader Night. Open lines all night long. Until tomorrow night, everybody be safe. 
Go back, Lee Tapping.